G'day viewers, my name is Graham Stevenson and I'd like to invite you to come on a journey of creativity and learning and adventure through the series Colour in Your Life. There's an artist in every family throughout the world and lots of times there's an artist deep down inside all of us as well. So grab your kids, your brothers, your sisters, your aunties, uncles and mums and dads and come and see how some of the best artists do what they do. Well, hi folks and welcome back to Colour in Your Life. Well, we are in Melbourne today and we are at the Auspicious Arts Incubator down here, which is a fantastic place where many, many artists gather and they learn from some incredible people about how to manage their careers. We're going to be spending the day with Natalie Ellis. Natalie? Nice to meet you, Graham. Thanks so much for being here. Natalie's had a very interesting part. Came out from England, was just recently, wasn't it? Yeah, at the beginning of 2018, I came to Australia. Yeah, and it's fantastic, and she's a resin artist, and we're going to be going through to, with her today with some resin paintings. But you, your original influence really came from your dad many years ago. Yeah, so my dad painted, mm -hmm. um, and so that was a big influence on me, and my mum bought me lots of paint, so I was always painting as a kid. That's fantastic, but you, you sort of went through the process or the struggle that most artists do is that you ended up starting your own business, which wasn't based on arts. Yeah. And you had a recruitment company, is that right? Yeah, so I did follow art all the way through to college, and then did the whole get a real job thing, yeah, which is yeah. really boring. I don't recommend it. <laughs> um, and yeah, I just didn't believe at that point that I could do my art. Uh -huh. So I didn't paint for quite a few years. And then all of a sudden I had this recruitment company. I was bored out of my mind and I went, oh, screw this. I need to do something creative. So I started painting again. Yeah. I started watching lots of colour in your life. Poor girl. <laughs> <laughs> um, and yeah, and then that's when I got back into it and it's been great. And you were saying before that you really had an epiphany at one stage about your work and what was happening with it. Yeah, so this was a really cool moment. Yeah. Um, so I was led in bed in France. I just spent the winter <laughs> snowboarding in France like you do. Yeah. Um, and I was about to drift off to sleep and I literally just sat bolt upright in bed and in like a second flat yeah. I had just dozens of images come to me of pieces of art that I wanted to paint. That's amazing. Um, I had an inspiration that I just knew I needed to do my art. I knew I needed to do resin art because uh -huh. I could imagine the flow and that's what was really drawing me. Yeah. And I knew that I wanted to use my art as a force for good in the world. Uh -huh. So I wanted to, um, any sales that I got from my art or from workshops, I want to buy books for people, inspirational oh, books for people in need. So yeah, it all came to me in this epiphany moment. So you're also an avid snowboarder as I am, well, which yes. is where you get your love of the mountains yeah. and the ocean from as well. Yeah, yeah. I'm and just drawn to the mountains and the ocean. Yeah, but part of part of what you're doing as well with the spiritual side of what you're doing is that you're an avid vegan as well. Yeah, I think that's really important. And here you are actually putting pieces together on the ocean, which is really part and parcel of what that belief system is about exactly, as well. Exactly, yeah. exactly, because a lot of damage to the ocean is happening from animal ag agriculture. Mm, so, of course. yeah, it's kind of cool that I'm painting the ocean. Great philosophy and great empathy for the planet that we live on as well. Yeah. Uh, and it's not a diet, is it? No, it's yeah. amazing. Yeah, it's I love being diet. vegan. Yeah. It's delicious. It's, okay, there you go. <laughs> well, I'm going to step out of the shot right now, and I'm going to let Natalie take over what she's going to do today and I'm going to ask some questions from the side but we'll go from there. All right Natalie there's a few things involved in what you do with particularly varying products for this so can you explain the products that you're using and what goes on with them? All right cool so I'm using art resin today um, which is my absolute favorite resin um, it's non-toxic it's really quick to mix you only have to mix it for three minutes rather than ten um, I've got some paints which I'll talk through as we go and then I've got my wooden board. So this was made up by a local carpenter. So it's just a masonite wooden board. You have to use wood because a canvas would sag in the middle. Um, and all I've done is paint it with, um, I actually used ceiling paint as a, as a base, um, just a base layer on, on the wooden board. And then um, I've used some acrylic paint to give it a bit of a base color. So I've just used a blue and like a sandy color. And it just gives the, the colour a bit of a, a depth. 
And then a really important thing is that I've used a spirit level to make sure it's perf perfectly level because otherwise it can all slide off. So just check in that it's level that way. It's level here. Level here. It's level that way and that way and that way so it's perfect. So first of all very important you put gloves on because it's very messy. <laughs> so I'll put my gloves on and we're going to mix equal parts resin and hardener. So it's essential it has to be absolutely perfect. So I always do it by eye rather than trusting the numbers. So so start off with the resin. Yeah, I'm surprised it is actually a a resin that's called art resin. I know. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. specifically for artists. Great stuff. So I'm going to be quite generous today, use quite a lot. Next one. Yep, yeah, so this is the hardener. Oh, look at that, perfect. <laughs> it's a perfect pull. Yeah. So now that you've got them level, yeah. what, what happens now? So now we're going to mix them together. So art resin is really good because you only have to mix it for three minutes. Yeah. So you literally pour one into the other. So in doing that, how long is this going to take before this goes off and how long do you have to stir it for? So I'm stirring it for three minutes yeah. and then we've got around 45 minutes to work with it. Um, after that point it just gets a bit too sticky and then it takes about 24 hours until it's dry to touch um, and then it's ready to hang after about 48 hours. It's amazing. So yeah, give it a really good mix. So in becoming a resin artist, how did you come across resin art? I just started seeing it pop up online, but in my, medita in my meditations I was doing, I was just getting a lot of images of quite flowing colours and artwork and I knew I wanted to do something that was quite flowing. Like I always used to paint with acrylic, which I love, but it's obviously very detailed and I just wanted to do something a bit different. So I just started seeing resin popping up online and as soon as I gave it a go, I loved it. Now I'm just gonna start pouring resin into some individual jugs. So these are gonna be my different colors. So we're gonna do an ocean piece today, of course. So now I'm just gonna mix together a few different colors. So I'm, I use just a mixture of acrylics, um, glass inks, golden acrylics. I really like golden acrylics. They've got a really lovely color to them. Uh -huh. And also some powdered pigments as well. I've got a powdered pigment gold, which is great. I like to create lots of different colors. So I might pour a bit on now and then add a bit more color. And So I'm just gonna put on some lighter color. So this is gonna Ooh. be near where it breaks. That. And then I'm actually gonna have it underneath some darker bits too. But as you can see, these golden high flow paints have got a really delicious deep color to them. So this is where my hands get a bit messy with resin because I start moving it around. So you can use your hands. I use a hair dryer as well. That's a really cool thing to use because it's a cold day, it definitely just needs a bit of heat. So I'm gonna get my trusty hair dryer on it, so it's gonna get a bit noisy now. Okay, so we're starting to build up a bit of a picture. So another really cool thing to use is a blowtorch. And this does a couple of things. So first of all, it gets the bubbles out. But second of all, I actually use it a bit like a paintbrush to move the resin around. So I'm just gonna give it a quick once over at the stage we're at now. So the, the, the heat is actually really, it's not, drying it out because that's the chemical process so the heat actually yeah. helps to move it around it does like you can you can actually really like blend 
colours using the blowtorch. Uh -huh. You do have to move quite quickly and obviously be careful because you've got a blowtorch in your hand. So I'm going to create a bit of a sand effect now. So I separate it into three different cups. And I'm going to just be a bit wild today. I'm actually going to have a bit of pink in my sand because why not? I'm going to have a pinky golden sandy colour. So, so you've just put some gold in there, have you? I have. So this yeah. is a gorgeous Langridge gold powder. So I've created a bit of a goldy pinky colour. I'm just going to add a bit more white to that actually. So I just keep playing around until I've created a colour that I think is really nice. And another great thing that you do, well, you do do workshops as well. And we're actually at the headquarters of the Auspicious Arts Incubator in Bank Street in Melbourne. Uh, where you guys have been working with John Paul for a while now and um, really creating some fantastic things here. And yeah, so John Paul at Auspicious Art, he's, he's been great. He's created an amazing course that I did called the Artist Transformation School. Uh -huh. And he basically is teaching artists how to make like businesses from their art and be able to actually make a living from what they love to do. Mm -hmm. So it's really amazing the work he's doing. So I've just now pulled together a few different sandy colours because I don't like to just do one, I like to mix a few together. So I'm going to pour on like a pinky sandy colour. So is there separation of those colours or they've sort of all blended? Yeah, in? there is a bit of separation which I love. Yeah. You don't quite know how the different colours are all going to interact with each other and then that's what gets the really interesting effects. Yeah. Now some of the other pieces that you've done, your, your colour scheme goes from warm to cool. Yeah. Uh, which is your sensual flow series as well. Yeah. And you've got these reds and pinks and yellows. They're very, very dynamic. These are great corporate pieces. I think that the work that you do would land really well in, in a corporate arena by any means. Yeah, exactly. And a lot of those colours, I think, are definitely inspired by the more spiritual side of my art. Mm -hmm. Which is why in my workshops, this is the point I want to get people to, is letting go of perfection, letting go of your head, which is trying to take over and figure out how to do everything and just following this instinct that we've all got. I've noticed in one of your workshops, everybody looks like they painted a crab nebula. Yeah. And then uh, put a forest scene in front of it, yeah. sort of like looking up the Aurora Borealis or something. Yeah, that was really fun. So yeah, they're the workshops I've been running in the UK and I've actually got other artists in the UK that are running those workshops for me now, so that's quite cool. So you franchised yourself. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's the way. It's starting to come together and now I'm going to do my favourite part, which is create the crashing wave effect with some white. So now the trusty hair dryer comes back in. And then to get that lace in effect is this is where the blowtorch comes into it. Okay. In a sense, you're painting with fire. Basically, yeah. yeah. This becomes my That's pretty amazing. paintbrush. I think with something like this and then with a the teacher like you and the workshops that you do, it would put some great value into people's lives. Definitely. And creativity is so powerful when you truly just give in to it. So what's your website address? So my website is www.natalieellisart.com and that's going to keep people updated on the workshops because I'll be doing them in the UK, mm -hmm. in Australia okay. and hopefully other places in the world. Great. I'm a bit of a traveller so any excuse to travel so yeah I'd love to do them all over the place that's so that's it. the best place to find out is my website. Wonderful. Well that's amazing Natalie, it really is fantastic but we're going to move on to the next one and have a look at that too. All right, let's do another one. Well, I'm with Jean-Paul Fishbach, who is the CEO of the Auspicious Arts Incubator in Melbourne. Uh, Natalie is part and parcel of uh, his group and what they do. And the incubator itself actually helps artists 
to manage their career and better guide them in what they're doing as far as their work is concerned, their emotions, I mean literally putting a whole business package together. Jean-Paul, uh, tell me a little bit more about Auspicious. Well, Natalie's a good example. So it's an artist who has an incredible passion mm -hmm. and incredible talent. But at some point, the talent just isn't enough. And you need that, those marketing skills and business skills that no one ever taught us as artists. Sure. So, you know, I'm a theater and film director by background, but no one ever taught us the basics of business and marketing. Yeah. So it's about understanding how to take that passion you have and turn that into your business so that you can make a living doing the thing you love. Because I'm sick and tired of a world with starving artists. Let's have no <laughs> more starving artists. Well, you've actually written a book on behalf of that as well. And it basically says uh, no more starving artists. Uh, I would recommend this because Jean-Paul has a huge amount of experience within theatre, within arts and helping people manage what they do. And part and parcel of that, as you and I both well know, is that you can leave uh, a college course or you can be an artist starting out early in your career and nobody really teaches you any of that at all, do they? No, not at all. So we created a course that's called the Artist Transformation School mm -hmm. because at a certain point you transform yourself and your arts practice into a business. Mm -hmm. So that's what Natalie's done. Mm. So she's gone through the Artist Transformation School and come out the other side with this incredible business. So mm. she's going to make some of her money from her art and she's going to make some of her money from her creativity. So Jean-Paul, if somebody wants to get hold of your book, what's the website address they need to go to? www.nomorestarvingartistsbook.com that sounds fabulous. And they have a limited amount of free books to give away, so I would suggest if you really want a, a great, great book that's going to tell you how to manage your career even better than what you're doing now, come in and see the guys. I think it's fantastic. We're going to get back to Natalie, and she's going to do another painting for us. All right, Natalie, well, we're going to get on to your second piece today, and it's a long one, and it's a bit more of a free pour. Tell us about that. Yep, so I call this one a dirty pour. So basically, we're going to put lots of colours in one jug, and we're going to pour it, and we're going to hopefully watch some magic happen. Cool. So how do we start? All right, so same way as last time, we're just going to pour and measure our resin to start off with. An art resin have all the measurements I believe on their website if, if you need to know how much to use for a certain sized board. So yeah, I recommend checking that out. So where do, you, where do you get those little jugs from with the measurements on you've got? Just buy them from a $2 yeah. shop or something? Yeah, exactly. Yes, you've got to be really precise, don't you? Yeah, otherwise it just will not cure properly. So that's now perfect. All right, so I'm gonna tip them both into a bigger jug. And then it's good to just get all the last bits out the bottom so you're not wasting it. Whilst I'm doing this, this is when I start to think about how much of each colour I want, if I want to make any last minute changes to my colour palette. Um, but yeah, this is the time where you start looking at the board and going, right, what do I want this to look like? Okay, so that's mixed. Lovely. So, get that out the way. So I'm going to split it up into a few different jugs now. So I've been thinking about how much of each colour I want whilst I was mixing. But this is a really easy technique, like literally anybody could just give this a go and do this. So I'm going to have a bit of white. Okay, then I am going to have some dark cherry colour. So that's a nice mm, colour. Rich, isn't it? I'm going to go for a teal kind of colour now. And this is with the goldens? Yeah, again, this is the golden fluid range, which are just amazing colours. Tell me about um, El Guna Blue. What does that mean? Well, that's inspired by a, a kite surfing and wakeboarding trip I had to Egypt mm -hmm. in a beautiful place called El Guna. And the water is just like gorgeously clear. Yeah, it now has a lovely owner in America, so Wonderful. it's international. Sounds like for a young woman you've had a pretty adventurous life too. Yeah, <laughs> I love adventure. Nothing wrong with that. 
Adventure and fun, that's what it's all about. Yep. So, I'm literally just gonna gently pull them in on top of each other, all in one bucket. You know, the last piece had a more of a composition to it and more detail, and this one's just really gonna be quite abstract. Okay, I think we're ready to go. Ooh, look so at this that. is very exciting. Which is brew. So I have a nice big jug of colour. Oh, look at that. You can see now loads of different cool effects coming through. And it's very bright and you can just keep tilting it to make sure the whole board is covered. So, Natalie, where did you come up with this technique? It's uh, purely experimental or...? It kind of was purely experimental, yeah. It was just one day I thought, oh, I'll put them all into one jug and see what happens. And it had an amazing effect. So, yeah, now when I want to just do a really fun piece, this is what I do. So I'll get the blowtorch out in a second. And so this is the type of perfect thing to do at work at, at one of my workshops mm. because you know you can imagine getting into a, a meditation or just really relaxing and then just picking what colours you're drawn to that day. So what's your website address again? So the website is natalieellisart.com. And uh, you go in there and have a look at what Natalie's doing. You, you give a whole bunch of free stuff away as well, don't you? Yeah, so I often give away free prints of my artwork. So if you're interested in that, then definitely jump on the website and sign up um, so that you can be eligible for free print giveaways. Um, and that's where I'll put all the information about the workshops and everything as well. Fantastic. Yeah, but I'm happy with that. So that's looking pretty cool. Another great masterpiece created by Natalie Ellis. <laughs> Well, what a great day, guys. It's absolutely fascinating, Natalie. What you did today was, was just great. I thought the other piece that we were working on, the C1, was just tremendous. It really was. Now, your website address again? natalieellisart.com. And if you want to come in, you've got some free things to give away, some yeah. free prints, go in, sign up, um, and then learn the materials that you need to do this as well. A really fascinating day. Wanted to thank Jean-Paul as well from Auspicious Arts Incubator. Um, they have some great stuff as well and Jean Paul is a fantastic guy that really helps to promote artists and teach them what to do with their career. So come in and see him and get his book as well. Uh, you'll get a lot out of it, it's, it's really amazing. Uh, once again, we're having a great time down in Melbourne. We're going to head off. Uh, you can come and see us on Facebook, you can come and see us on YouTube and you can always come into our website, culinarylife.com.au. Come and say hi, there's uh, so many things we've got going on these days from all over the world, so come in and be part of what we're doing. But until we see you guys again, as always, remember, make sure you put some colour in your life. And we'll see you next time. <laughs> Bye now. Bye. <laughs>